the Bill and Scott Cubicle Show with Billy the Kid and Scott Tang. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. Cubicle Show. All the rules. It's, it's the, the Bill and Scott, Scott Cubicle, Cubicle Show. show. Yeah. yeah. It's the Bill and Scott Cubicle, Cubicle show. show. Yeah! What up? I'm Scott. And I'm Bill. And this is the, the Bill and Scott, Scott Cubicle, Cubicle Show. show. <laughs> are we having an audio you, problems? You are un, unpredictable, sir. You are just a maniac. I'm a maniac. You're a maniac. I'm the way we did that already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's an update on this Triple uh, X uh, murder case going on. Also, artists are out here and they need to start paying Triple X's family. Like, on the for real. And this, like, I realized it yesterday at the Wiz Khalifa show. We're walking around. I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, Taylor is out here trademarking her pussy cat's names. <laughs> um, what's his face is back on uh, AMC? Chris Hardwick. Hardwick, yes. Uh, Ray Schremmerd is not letting Wiz Khalifa live his best life. This is tragic. Tragic at its finest. Also, we'll give you a nice little show recap on uh, Wiz Khalifa last night. Uh, box office. Bill is here ready to box office. The... Ready to box office 12 rounds. Wait, how many rounds are there in a boxing match? Well, I mean, in like a... Have like a championship fight, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I mean, there could be different things. There could be like eight rounds. There could be a ten round. There could be a six. You know, what I mean, it depends on what the sanctioned fight is. However like, many rounds there are, I'm here for it. But like, uh, um, <coughs> twelve is like common. You know what I mean? That's like your your championship rounds. Anyways, let's hop right into this right here. I'm gonna get into this because I kind of touched on this right now. So, Triple X, right? He was murdered in Florida couple weeks about ago. About a month ago. About a month ago now. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the third person was just picked up a part of the case, so there's one more person that they're looking for. This person was picked up in Georgia. So I this believe. was not some random like crime, some robbery. This was a setup. This was planned. I feel this is a murder. Yeah. I, I feel like it turned <laughs> into a murder. I don't think it was necessarily always said to be a murder, but I think that they were going to rob him, okay. and then he wasn't willing to just give up everything so easily, and then that's when... He ended up giving up everything. Yeah, unfortunately. Way too easily. Um, which is just sad because, I mean, this was honestly just a star, like... A rising star. Yeah, so he was going to be... If he had to give up 15000 whatever it was, yeah. he would have made that back in no time right. at all. It's it's an unfortunate situation. Very sad. But anyways, um, so last night we're at the Wiz Khalifa <clears throat> show, and Lil Skies is playing... He plays like three songs of like... X's during his performance takes up about like 10 minutes of his slot and everything and like that's cool you want to you know pay your respect and you want to pay all you know give a tribute to X and everything the fans that are there you know they love the moment and everything and you got like little skies like singing along to his songs on stage it's a cool moment but when you're being paid to be on stage for 15 20 minutes and you decide to use like 10 minutes of that time to pay tribute to X and you're playing his songs, whatever money you're getting for those minutes that you're playing his songs, you should be sending to his family. Like, why are you getting paid for playing his music? You're being paid to be on stage to play your music. You want to give, you, you could give a tribute. You don't have to play his music to uh, <clears throat> to give like a speech or say something yeah. about the guy. But if you're going to go about and you're going to play his music and it's going to become a whole big part of your set, you should be sending his family money for playing his songs and using that as your time at, to fill up your 20 minutes. Not to mention, you want to do a tribute, do like one song. Or maybe like a medley of a couple songs that would turn out to be the length of roughly one song. When you're doing three and that's half your set, it's not a tribute. That's this. Look, the guy's name was XXX Tentacion, which st stood for Unknown Temptation. It was not XXX Exploitation. Yes, and he's being exploited like yeah. crazy. And you know what? I feel I understand he's done a lot. Like a lot of people are connected to him, and they got this big emotional connection and everything. And a lot of the artists have it too. But I can't help but feel you're taking advantage of the man in his death when you're playing his songs for half your freaking set. Like send his family some damn money. And especially when the number of people that we talk to that like like who are you most excited to see, and they're like little skies. Like what? Yeah. You're 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 robbing them of the little skies experience yeah. by playing some other artist's music, you know, even from, even from, from a pragmatic standpoint. So, yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, 
Looks like uh, Jessica says agreed. And Shamina uh, also agrees. True. And Tayo is in the proverbial digital building. Hey there. <clears throat> Thanks for checking in. So that's really what <laughs> I got to say about the triple X thing. I just think it's like completely unfair. You know, it's like you're going to. You're making all this money, whatever, even if, like, even if, say, Lil Skies is making $5,000 a show, if it's taking up half your set, you should be sending his family 2500 like, on the for real. Like, break it down, send that man, uh, send that family some money. And he has a kid. Didn't he just have a kid or the kid's on the way, too? Whatever like it is, that. like, that child's going to need some money to live. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move along, you know? Getting angry. For it sounds like it. Sounds like you're getting frustrated. Oh, it just bothered me <coughs> so much yesterday because we're at the show. And it's like, so he, they play like uh, "Look at Me," and then they go into "Sad," and then they play another like X song. And I, I'm I'm not the biggest X fan. I'm not gonna lie. And I'm like, that's when I turn to Bill and I'm like, this whole this, set's become an X. Yep that that actually happened. This whole baby brainchild was born last night as we were walking by trying to do ticket upgrades. All right, so we got more to talk about with the Wish Show where we, we'll get to in a little we'll bit, like back the meet and greet that. experience and everything. <clears throat> but Taylor Swift, she's out here trademarking her uh, her pussy cat's names. <laughs> so I saw this article. It was like Taylor Swift <clears throat> trademarks her cat's names, Olivia Benson and Dr. Meredith Grey. So she's selling a whole bunch of merch with these cats on it. Uh, okay. can I? <clears throat> I know we're not supposed to speak ill of Taylor Swift here, and I'm not going to. What I'm going to say is to the, the Taylor Swift fans, can you stop doing this? Can you stop buying all the dumb things that she puts out, at least until they get cheaper? Like, don't don't be paying freaking $50 for a T-shirt. The great prophet Macklemore predicted this back in 2012 when Thrift Shop came out and called all you people suckers. Okay, so stop it. When she puts her cat's face on a T-shirt with some glasses, it doesn't even say Taylor Swift. It's just a cat wearing glasses. And admittedly, that's kind of amusing. I will say it's a kind of a cute looking shirt, right? But I ain't going to pay $30 for that. <coughs> She's got a whole merch line. Just for her cats. I think Taylor Swift's true genius is not singing and songwriting. I think it's marketing. She knows how to sell and what to sell and who sell, to sell, sell it to. Sell, and sell, she's sell, very sell, good sell. at it. I saw the uh, trademark is actually Olivia and Meredith Swift. That's the trademark. And they've also, uh, in the trademark application, she said there could be musical recordings and a live show for her freaking cats. Uh, uh, music, uh, that, music that, 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 by Olivia Benson. The cat was it going to be like the the, the meowing shiny? Christmas cats? Like, is that what we're looking at here? Uh, or is it going to be like when Blue Ivy Carter was featured on that track and became the youngest person to chop chop <laughs> chart on the Hot 100 because she cried on a Jay Z track? That was freaking stupid too. If I see any kind of dumb records from Billboard about these being the first cats to land in the top ten of the Hot 100, I'm going to lose my dang mind. What? Anyway, I was about to get real pissed off because the headline was like, oh, she trademarked Olivia Benson and Dr. Meredith Grey. I was like, Dr. Meredith Grey is a title character from Grey's Anatomy. How are you going to trademark something that someone else came up with as though you made it more famous? Just like freaking Jay-Z talking about how he made a Yankee hat more famous than a Yankee can. That always pissed me off. I want to smack him right in the mouth. No, you did not, sir. That's two Jay-Z references in one angry bit. No, Jay, I'm not going to turn the volume down because John's not here. I get a free pass on this episode. You should definitely smack Jay-Z. In the face. There's no uh, way. Yo, the Beyonce yeah, stands would love me for that. Beyonce going? Twitter would love me if I smack Jay Z in the mouth. They would be like, "Yes, King." Bill, be Bill. What? You guys, Busa. Listen. what? Busa. Take us on the go with you, okay? I'm the uh, floor director if you guys do that. Oh, so anyway, my you. my point is here. I think to bring it all back down to a reasonable volume. But speaking of which, my swing line stapler got stolen. And I think I know who the culprit is. Um, uh, my, my point is, even if she had tried to trademark Dr. Meredith Grey, I bet you she would have gotten away with it because Taylor Swift just does whatever she wants and she gets paid while she does it. No, that's the truth. And uh, why can't we speak ill on Taylor Swift? Well, we can, but every time we do, we, uh, we get summoned to a room to be, to be yelled at. We, yeah, the, the Taylor Swift thought police are always yeah. like, I don't know what it is. They must have some kind of... World Wide Web algorithm where if you say Something Taylor negative, Swift if, and in any kind of negative connotation, if you don't say you're she's a, a goddess, like a microphone, and the best they thing know. ever, and they get in touch with the people who are who run the show around here, and the hammer falls yeah. upon us. Yeah, 
It's, it's, really, it's funny because we we talk about a lot of artists in not the most positive light, yeah. but but only oh, Taylor Swift has ever gotten Taylor. us in trouble. <laughs> and it's always about That's Taylor. how we know it's her. Yeah. This isn't one of our crazy conspiracies. This is right. A real no, I could talk about deal. smacking Jay Z in the mouth and being stupid for saying he made a Yankee hat famous. Nobody cares. But if I say Taylor Swift shouldn't put a cat on a T-shirt, then gonna boy, cat. it's oh. coming. Oh ho ho ho! <clears throat> Catch hell for that one. Uh, what's his name? Chris Hardwick. There coming he is. Back to oh, man, a- you picked the- <laughs> that picture of him. He's got some crazy eyes. Yeah, no. <laughs> Him and his little loony <coughs> status. Okay. Yeah. I don't know this story fully. Right. It's basically so about a month ago, one of his ex girlfriends wrote this big long article like that painted this picture of him as an abusive monster. She never mentioned it by name, but it was pretty easy to put the pieces together, figure out who she was talking about. Um, so like basically instantly, uh, the company that he created, Nerdist. That's like, funny, Genevieve. They <laughs> cut all ties with him. So um, he he does he's no longer associated with them anymore. Um, AMC was like, okay, so we're removing him from you know our schedule and our programming pending an investigation on this matter. Which at least you know at least they're doing the investigation. Um, Nerdist was just like, nah, bye, you're done. You got accused, you're out. Uh, which is really kind of my main my main point here. But we'll get to that. Um, so AMC did their investigation, found out that basically um, the grounds on which he was accused didn't hold water. They were, it was too, the ground was too mushy. It became mud. Um, and they were like, yeah, so he's going to come back to Talking Dead in the fall. Best idea is to, can, uh, I'll read you their statement. Uh, we take these matters very seriously, and given the information available to us, after a very careful review, including interviews with numerous individuals, we believe returning Chris to work is the appropriate step. Oh, I forgot to mention that, like, as soon as this news broke, um, a bunch of his other ex-girlfriends started speaking up and being like, ah, that's not what we experienced, like, to defend him. And then that's good. My, I guess my point here is that, like, not that you shouldn't listen to an accuser, but you shouldn't just automatically assume somebody who accuses somebody of being abusive or harassment or assault is automatically telling the truth. Because especially now, when, like, people are getting called for legitimately doing it, there's other people out there who are like, ooh, you know, I can get back at somebody I don't like by accusing them of mm-hmm. something really bad, and everybody will believe me. Especially right now, you can mess up somebody's life for an accusation right. that isn't even true. And then it comes out that it's not true, but nobody even cares because... Because the reputation's already tarnished. Yeah. The internet already hates this guy. Like, it was immediate. As yeah. soon as this, this thing was published, it was the freaking backlash on Twitter was insane. I saw Chris Hardwick trending, and I was like, what's going on? It was like a lot of tweets, and I clicked. And it was just everybody was bashing him. Um, and, you know, it was like his career is over. But I guess it's not, thanks to AMC. So good on them. The same way I feel that if, you know, you go and you do something to someone, you should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But if you also are making false accusations, you should also yes. be prosecuted yes. to the Precisely. fullest extent of the law. And, again, this isn't like a also, court of law, but, you know. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. And, and it's like... Somebody that comes out and makes false claims, I think, takes away from the real claims yes, that are made. Yes, that's also a big problem. And I problem. think that hinders the movement and the good that's being right. done. So, don't be selfish and try to just like, put something on somebody to make somebody look bad. I was trying to come up with a rhyme for selfish, but I couldn't. Shellfish. Yeah, don't be selfish and clam up like a selfish. <laughs> like a shellfish. shellfish. There you go. That's good. <laughs> Boy, oh, that's man. why we can't have a show together. Wow, because we'll put Howard Stern out of business. <laughs> Howard, we coming for you, man. I'm going to put Satellite out of business. We're going to be on every single radio station. doesn't matter if it's hip-hop, country, Oldies. pop, classical. oldies, classical, political. Oh, right. You're taking over the talk yeah. radio. We're taking over it all, 24-7, <clears throat> every station across the world. Soon. Holla. Okay. All right, um... So the Times Union put out this article about Wiz Khalifa and Ray Shremmerd last night, the show that went down. And they say that Ray, the Shrem boys, Shrem boys. they Shrem do they put on That's a way it. better show than uh, Wiz Khalifa here. They say that Wiz Khalifa is basically the second act to them. The second fiddle? Yep. And okay, that, what, was the, what was the exact line here? It was... It was Ray Schremer dominates co-headliner Wiz Khalifa. They said it was basically a one-headliner show or a one-act show. Is that what it was? Yep. Which is, um, I mean, I guess they're not letting Wiz live his best life. Like, like I would like to see Slim Jimmy do just as good as Wiz. <laughs> or Sway Lee do just as good as Wiz. It's unfair. It's like 
The power up method. Yeah, it's a 2v1. It's a power play. Yeah. How are you going to lay the smack down 2v1 and then feel all good about it? Like, come on. Respect the boy, Wiz. Anyways, I, I could believe, though, people... I, Ray has... It just so, feels so crazy calling him Ray because there's two of them, but I'm doing it anyways. Ray has had way more hits over the past two years than Wiz Khalifa. That's true. We were talking about that last night. He hasn't really had a song in a while. Yeah. Like, he had the See You Again, then he had that little run after See You Again, and then it's now he's starting to roll out new music again for Rolling Papers 2, and I don't think they've been really grabbing. Hammering at home? Yeah. Like... Oh, they haven't been, like, catching people's attention? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, the way that uh, a Ray song would. Not Charles, but Shremmer. <laughs> Dude, they should do a Ray Charles tribute and call it... Ray Schmarls? <laughs> yeah, Ray Schmarls. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best thing but, ever. Oh, somebody's calling me? I'll let it go to voice. I fresh out my voicemail. I'll let it go to voicemail. Yeah, anyway, um, I, did, it- I did have a good experience with... Um, with the meet and greet with Wiz Khalifa, though. Um, I didn't stick around for the show because I was tired as all heck fire yesterday. I desperately needed to go to bed. But Okay, so, oh my goodness. This is the picture from the meet and greet. That's Stephanie. You may recognize her from her flame broil takes or the numerous other things she assists us with on the station. But check out this picture, right? Look at me. Look how... They can't see the mouse yeah. cursor. Dang. Um, He's the one in the all black. I look fat. I look like a fat, lumpy loaf of bread, like like a the dough that wasn't cooked long enough. But then, you know, I showed Scott this picture. And it's like, you know, look at you put yourself next to freaking Liz Khalifa, who's doing a bunch of MMA training. And he's recently, ripped. Like, and they say he's like really good and like knock, would knock out like a pro fighter. And then Stephanie, who's been doing CrossFit for four years and she's going to compete in the CrossFit Games in freaking Wisconsin, like this international tournament next week. Next I think. week. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, you know what? That's true. We got these two hard bodies that I just, I look like a pillow, like freaking. Like you're not bad. Like you're, you're not the most in shape, but you're pretty in shape. I'm better. Not... I'm in better shape than I was, yeah. which is why I'm so disappointed. At like, how this you don't have like out. a crazy gut or anything <laughs> like that. But when you're standing next to two people that have like ten packs, yeah, yeah. you're not gonna it's look tough. like it's uh, a rough life. Yeah, you're you know, pretty good shape they're like they're, they're the two of them are like the Ray Schremer to my Wiz Khalifa, if you want to put it in those terms. They're not living me. Let me See, live that's my what best I said, life. Genevieve. He doesn't look fat. I'm like, um. <laughs> Yeah, he, he's kind of handsome, I guess, in his black and but. I mean, my outfit. Don't get me wrong, my outfit's on point. And my sister was like, "Yo, you guys have the same shoes," and I was like, "I bet you his shoes aren't Unlimited Patience brand from the store in Crossgates. The not freaking minor like the five dollars twenty dollars shoes. I'm pretty sure his shoes are a little bit more expensive than mine. But uh, I do like my shoes. I'm not wearing them right now. Actually, I'm wearing five dollar Walmart shoes right now. <laughs> Don't buy yourself. Reward yourself. Um, See, Madeline says you're doing awesome nonsense. See, that's what I'm saying. But it's just tough when you're up against two right. specimens it makes like you, that. It makes you look. It makes you, know, you feel uncomfortable. Down. But when I isolate, like, even, like, <laughs> don't matter. You can't put your hand up over it. If you isolate even just one <laughs> of them out of there, it like, don't look like crazy. But you're standing next to two beasts. But it was fun though, because when he uh, when he came down the steps, like into the meet and greet area, he, I didn't even know he was coming until I heard him go howdy, and he's like going howdy to all these people on the line. I was like, this guy's funny, yeah. and like he was pretty chill. Uh, he was signing everything that everybody asked him to. At one point, um, one kid was like, oh, I want to get a group picture, and the photographer was like, no group pictures, and he's like, no, oh, I get get the group over here get your picture see Wiz is pretty chill like that like I didn't go back and I didn't like uh, meet him do any interviews with him yesterday but I've like talked to him yeah interviewed him and all this stuff like so many times now and I would have and he's always been consistent like from before black and yellow till today the dude is he seems like a regular chill. dude like he was actually listening to what people were saying you get sometimes you get these meet and greets where the artists act like they can't hear what the people around them are saying like they're on some kind of special celebrity frequency yeah. and everything else is just noise but he was actually like he said to the kid like no get over here and have your picture so I, I respect that it was yeah. fun all right so you got some movie uh, box office bill right yeah now to get we into got the here. um so coming out this weekend, we got Mission Impossible um, 7, 7, it's it? uh, Fallout, yes. Mission Impossible Fallout, I don't know, yes. freaking, uh, there has been a trailer for this movie before like every single movie since like November, yeah. and I've about had it with trailers for this movie, that said, I do think it looks kind of yeah, cool, it looks pretty good, I haven't seen 
any of the other missions. I saw the first one when I was like nine, and I don't remember anything about it. it awesome. So I kind of want to go and buy that like five pack, or maybe this is number six. Um, I think they it's have, six. Yeah, the five pack that they have at Walmart, and just like catch up on all the movies, and then go see this one. Um, uh, they're not all that great. One is good. Two is eh. Three is pretty good. Yeah, um, but when a five pack of movies is twenty bucks or twenty five okay. for the Blu-rays. I could, uh, I could, you know. You really don't need that. to watch probably too much of it to know what's going. Probably on. Probably not, but uh, I'm hoping it's like Fast and the Furious, you know, because it seems like it's like this ensemble cast deal. It is, and you know, as it goes along, you know, Fast and Furious just gets better. These movies, I hope. No, no, no. We'll find out. Then there's also that Bo Burnham movie, Eighth Grade, that's coming out that I kind of want to see too. But uh, I don't know because Movie Pass has changed their terms uh, with the surge pricing nonsense. It's basically like anytime you would want to go see a movie, you're gonna have to pay an extra four dollars. And I ain't about that life. So, yep, so you gotta go see in a couple weeks, weeks maybe I'll see Mission Impossible when the surge pricing is over. Mm. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, mm. Mm. not happy with Movie Pass right now. I guess the only good thing about that movie is Superman's in it. Oh, Henry Cavill, that's, this, is, that's, this is actually the movie that he couldn't shave his mustache for, which is why they had to CG his mustache out in Justice League, and it looked so bad. Oh, uh, boy. Okay, so that's what that's what I got for today. Okay, that's, that's it the for report. today's show. That's the box office report. All right, so that's it for this week's uh, Cubicle Show. We'll be back at it on Monday. You can catch us Monday through Thursday on the Jams Facebook page at 1030 Eastern Time. Because that's the only time zone that matters. I did the opposite of what you did. Okay, bye. One. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show! That's what I'm talking about, boy! Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Yeah? Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Yeah! Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle show. It's the Bill and Scott, Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Cubicle show. Not a rectangle show. Not a triangle show. Not a pyramid show. It's a cubicle show. Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Yeah. Bill and Scott Cubicle show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just got one boy.